colleagues. Over to you, Isaiah. Good afternoon, good morning and good evening. My name is Isaiah Toroitich. Um, I work with the Lutheran World Federation as Head of Global Advocacy and uh, I am uh, one of the co-chairs of this task team. Over to you, Eliza. Thank you so much, Isaiah. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, everyone. My name is Eliza Gazzotti and I work for Soka Gakka International and I'm in charge of human rights education and I'm also the co-chair of this human rights engagement task team. Nice meeting all of you. Wonderful. So now you know the team and uh, uh, we will share with you an overview of the human rights engagement task team. Uh, just to start with, it's uh, the task team has quite an ambitious goal, uh, we would say, because it is really trying to bridge the humanitarian and human rights world. And from the registration details we received about you, you are coming from different background and context, and you may know that uh, often we work in parallel instead of looking into synergies between the different types of stakeholders. So the task team is really here to bridge uh, those uh, elements, and I will give the floor to Isaiah to tell us more about how uh, the task team functions and how it is structured. Over to you, and we can move to the next slide, please. Thank you very much, Valerie. And indeed, you have sort of um, explained what this grand vision we have is all about. But I think it should be useful for you participants to know that we've only been existing since May of 2020. At the moment, we have about 40 members. Um, these are organizations from the United Nations um, system, but also NGOs. In some cases, we have international and national NGOs, uh, faith-based organizations, and others are participating in our task team. At the moment, as uh, we did, it, we said in the introduction, um, the task team is co-chaired by the UNHCR, by the Lutheran World Federation and the Soka Gakkai International. And we meet every Wednesday of every month, actually. And our next meeting is will be on the 26th of May um, at 2.30 p.m. Geneva time. Uh, we really, really hope that you will be interested and that you can join these meetings. Information about that will come on later. What I wanted to do um, with the next uh, one and a half minutes or so is to talk a bit about um, the objective of this task team and then talk a bit more concretely about what we actually do. Um, the first objective, which I think is quite important for us and for all of you, is the use of human rights tools to protect the rights of people affected by humanitarian crisis. So this is one key objective. The next one is um, the utilization of uh, human rights mechanisms, be it the UPR system, be it uh, CEDAW, be it the Human Rights Council and other human rights mechanisms in the context of the global protection clusters effort to raise awareness and to advocate on behalf of people who are affected by crisis. And then the third objective I wanted to mention is related to the fact that we are different organizations working in different contexts, um, covering different sectors. And so we would like to use our task team as a platform to exchange knowledge and to share good practice. And we already see this in our monthly meetings where uh, individual organizations and experts come on board to share the experiences from their uh, their work in different parts of the world. So this is really, really the the, the great, um, the, in, in a sense, the broad uh, objective of the task team. And then when we talk about concretely what this means, um, the first thing that comes to our mind as a task team is supporting the work that is being done at the field level. So supporting field clusters, supporting NGOs at the local level uh, in terms of providing um, comprehensive technical um, support to enable them to link their work, the protection work to human rights. And then the second one that is quite concrete is providing guidance and policy development, uh, which is very much looking at ensuring that right from the local, local national, regional, global level, there is uh, products, this evidence-based research and uh, documentation that helps to bridge 
humanitarian work, human rights, um, peace, um, development. Uh, if you will be looking also at it from the triple nexus of peace, development and humanitarian action. And then lastly, we invest quite a lot in capacity building and training. And this is uh, very much around training in terms of advocacy training, uh, human rights training, training on specific human rights instruments, um, and making sure that our field um, operations, the colleagues in the field, have the necessary tools and awareness and capacity to uh, to do this work. So this is um, a broad definition or introduction of why we exist. And I would like to uh, hand over the floor to, to Valerie to, to, to take us to the next part of the presentation. Over to you, Valerie. Thank you, Isaiah. And we can move to the next slide, please. So uh, Isaiah just mentioned that we are still very new and not even uh, one year ago that uh, the task team has been created. But what was really important for us that we start by consulting our colleagues in the field, the colleagues working at the forefront of the humanitarian crisis, and we asked them what are their needs vis-a-vis -vis, um, uh, uh, the linkages with human rights systems. And here is a very broad summary uh, summarized on one slide. So first of all, they said capacity building because humanitarian actors are very rarely trained um, and made aware about what are the human rights mechanisms, how we can use them strategically, why uh, they could bring an added value to our work, etc. So if we want to use them, we need to first be aware of them, and this goes to local actors, international actors, etc. Second area where they thought uh, they would need some support is on strategic engagement with the national human rights institutions. So national human rights com uh, commissions, ombudspersons, they may have different forms in different contexts, but how can we use their mandate, which is quite unique uh, to and complementary to our actions to advance our protection dividends? Further on, uh, colleagues felt that uh, they would like to receive support uh, with engagement directly with human rights mechanisms. And Isaiah already mentioned a variety of them, but this can range from inputs to the universal superiority review or getting in touch with a special reporter on a certain thematic, etc. This goes to the UN uh, human rights mechanisms, but also to the regional ones. Another area that they highlighted uh, was that we should use more human rights aspects in our advocacy protection strategies, uh, have the human rights angle, which is very important and which is also there to tackle the root causes. And this is linked to the monitoring activities and how we identify also through the protection incidents, the rights that are impacted by those protection incidents. So a key area which is now identified as a gap. Further on, they asked if we can set up some peer exchanges between colleagues, share good practices, what has worked, how, why, etc. So this is another area we are working on and provide a clear guidance on how actually colleagues on the ground in humanitarian settings can engage with human rights systems and what is their role. All this uh, should be supported by, uh, by colleagues that are on standby to provide guidance, advice, availability for brainstorming when needed. So those are the key areas uh, that have been suggested. And we will move to the next slide where I, I will share with you very briefly what we have done so far uh, in one of the three pillars that Isaiah outlined, uh, being the field support. So after the uh, consultations I just familiarize yourself with, um, we have started to conduct thematic webinars. This is very important so that we have an open channel of communication with colleagues around topics tackling human rights engagement in humanitarian settings. So we conduct them on a monthly basis. If you are interested to join, we would be happy to share with you the details. 
We have also set up a peer exchange group, which is a more of a closed door space um, under Chatham rules, so no notes, no recording, uh, where we meet every two months and share also between us what are the challenges, what are the key questions and how we can learn from each other. Uh, we have established uh, specific calendars, so each country has a predictability how they can engage with human rights uh, mechanisms throughout the year and also provide a targeted support. So if a colleague in Mali has a question on how we can engage with human rights uh, institutions, we can be on call and discuss. So there has been targeted country support. Also discussions around the Secretary General's call to action for human rights and agenda for protection that we will tackle a bit later. And we really try to uh, have targeted discussions based on the interest of our field colleagues. This was, for example, on reprisals and protection of civic space, as well as protection analytic framework. So how do we integrate human rights angles into protection analysis? So those are just some examples that we have already put in place, and I will give the floor to Elisa to share with us what we have done on the capacity building pillar, and we can move to the next slide, please. Thank you so much, Valerie and Desaya. So as they both mentioned, one important pillar in our task team is the capacity building pillar, which also includes trainings. The aim is really to ensure that um, the field actors can enhance their capacities on human rights mechanism and how to really engage with the human rights. In this sense, we, um, I will present now some of the activities that we started to conduct. One uh, and tools. One um, is the creation of the, a simple database of resources available with um, free existing resources that were already um, made by our organization in our task team. Uh, second, we are developing currently a good practice dashboard that aims at containing how to um, really engage with human rights, uh, UN human rights mechanism, and really aims to, as uh, Isaiah mentioned before, to really have this um, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, sharing so that we can really learn from uh, what has already been done from our colleagues. And then uh, we, are, we have developed three training packages on human rights engagement, namely one stakeholder analysis, uh, second a human rights analysis infographic, and third how to engage in internally displaced people on human rights. In addition, we have developed two trainings on human rights mechanisms that were already delivered in collaboration with national human rights institutions, were in English and French. Then, thanks to an uh, NGO of our human rights engage engagement task team called UPR Pontinfo, we, uh, were delivered three trainings in French, English and Spanish. Then a module on human rights education in humanitarian setting is currently being developed and will be also delivered in the second part of this year. And uh, then, um, as also Valeria already mentioned, we conduct monthly webinars that are delivered in English and in French. For instance, in March was delivered this webinar um, on the strategic engagement with the Human Rights Council and was presenting the case studies of the resolution on promoting, protecting and respecting women and girls full enjoyment of human rights in humanitarian situations. And um, finally, a session to Mali during the field training for coordinators was also developed. Thank you so much. I will now give over the floor to Isaiah. And if I could have the next slide, please. Uh, thank you. And colleagues, you will remember that um, May last year was just two months after the COVID pandemic had hit the world. And it has, in a sense, affected how we do advocacy at all levels. But one of the key messaging, I would say, that influenced a lot the way we were thinking was also how COVID as a pandemic was affecting the human rights of people displaced people, host communities, refugees, asylum seekers. And so we've tried as much as possible to use the opportunity that was available for us to do um, some international advocacy. I think it was particularly interesting um, the amount of work we did in terms of engaging with special rapporteurs 
um, from with different mandates um, to talk to us quite a lot about uh, the protection of people um, that are particularly vulnerable in the context of um, humanitarian crisis. We also managed to organize uh, a number of high level events uh, including one during the Global Protection Forum of 2020. And then we are, in fact, organizing um, an event right now uh, that will take place uh, on the 6th of May at, at, at 1 o'clock. I would highly encourage you to join us and we can send you information about it. And in addition to that, um, we did follow the processes related to the Human Rights Council last year and also including this year uh, when we have, as you know, we've just um, finalized the first session of the Human Rights Council uh, for 2021. There's two more to go and we are finding ways of providing um, oral statements in some cases, uh, bringing the voices of uh, people from the, the, the field um, to speak on their, on their own behalf about their own situations. Um, I think it would also be important to mention that part of our advocacy is very communications oriented, um, sort of finding opportunities to run social media campaigns. Uh, we did in fact get videos uh, from rights holders and from our, our friends and partners in, in, in at country level to share their experiences and why it is important to connect human rights um, with humanitarian response. And I thought that was quite successful. And these are things we intend uh, to keep doing. As Valerie and Elisa said, a lot of our members within the task team are taking their own initiatives to engage in advocacy on behalf of the entire task team. And this is something we, we encourage a lot. Um, we, as Valerie mentioned as well, have started to engage quite deeply with the Secretary General call to action and, and agenda for prote protection, having talked, for example, with the, with the teams there, but also already uh, collecting input from the from our, our, our membership and from the cluster uh, as to how the, these two um, clarion calls from the UN uh, level can be supported and can be implemented on the ground. Um, lastly, I just want to mention that we've done some research with, um, in partnership with Overseas Development Institute and that we have had several direct um, engagement with diplomatic missions in Geneva, uh, basically talking to them as well about the objectives of this team and about their own government's um, abilities and support towards uh, further integration of human rights into humanitarian response and humanitarian work. Um, we, in fact, have a meeting with um, a number of them. Um, I think it's on May 10th, um, later, later in the week, to, to see how we can, we can move this work further. I'm going to stop there, maybe hand over to you, Valerie, uh, to take us to the next part. Thank you so much, uh, Isaiah. So you have heard some of our uh, achievements or where we could get so far. Um, I have also posted in the chat information about the Thursday event that we are organizing with uh, presentations by the Special Rapporteur on IDPs, the Global Protection Cluster Global Coordinator, Secretary General's Executive uh, Office colleagues, but also two um, uh, voices from the field. So you may be interested to join. And uh, as Isaiah mentioned, there are various initiatives in the pipeline, include, uh, including the research with uh, ODI, thematic webinars, uh, uh, capacity building, etc. So all those uh, initiatives will be coming in the upcoming weeks, and we would be very happy to tell you more about it. Um, and I think we can stop here, actually, so that uh, we can have some 10 minutes for our interactions. And we hope that this very brief presentation has sparkled some interest for you uh, in the task team. And we would be very happy to connect bilaterally as well. We have uh, had one uh, one question from um, colleague in uh, OHCHR, uh, actually from Elise. How do we coordinate with OHCHR uh, in this task team? So this is excellent question, and we know that when we say human rights, traditionally we think immediately about OHCHR, which is uh, great, and they are an integral part of this task team. So uh, we have colleagues uh, that are not 
only of course members but also part of the strategic engagement uh, we engage across OHCHR mainly with the humanitarian affairs unit but also with colleagues in the special procedures branch UPR and others and also OHCHR colleagues in the field and the human rights advisors to resident coordinators so it's really a cross-cutting element and and the collaboration is very, very close. I hope, uh, Elise, it has answered uh, your question. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for your uh, answer. Wonderful, thank you. And I would invite other colleagues if you have any reflection or question to share it with us. You can take the floor, uh, maybe if you raise your hand. We can maybe put on the screen, uh, Peter, our contacts, if OK. Next slide. Thank you. I, OK, I see a hand from Isaiah, so over to you, Isaiah. Thank you. I just wanted to follow up on your, your, your last comment about the important role of uh, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. And I wanted to follow up by saying, in addition to, to this um, key expertise we get from uh, from that office, as well as the key expertise we get from the UNHCR, there is uh, an important connection that we have to NGOs and civil society organizations. We feel quite strongly that the collaboration between the UN agencies and um, civil society organizations on this agenda is particularly important. So I just wanted to emphasize that um, we, 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 we try to, to keep the circle complete by connecting the relevant UN agencies, but also the relevant um, humanitarian and human rights non-governmental organizations. Over to you. Thanks so much, uh, Isaiah, for bringing this important point. So colleagues, I think uh, this is about it, about our quick pitch uh, session on the Human Rights Engagement Task Team. Uh, if you are interested to know more or to join uh, some of our events, uh, as well as uh, maybe even monthly meetings, please don't hesitate to reach out to Elisa, Isaiah or myself and uh, we will uh, definitely follow up and we strongly encourage you if you are available and interested to join our session on Thursday at one o'clock Geneva time. Thank you very much and let us be in touch. Thanks, Thanks everyone. You.